the grouchy nerd. All right, you antisocial weirdos, it's time to learn a game that can play at the ideal player count. One. Caesar sees Rome in 20 minutes, designed by Paolo Mori, with solo rules by Nick Shaw and David Turchi, and published by Floodgate Games, is an area control mini, maybe micro war game in which you'll play as either Julius Caesar or Pompus Magnus as you battle for control of the Roman Republic as it slips further into a fascist state. To do so, you'll send your armies to control borders between provinces. Have enough influence, you win control of the province. Win control of enough provinces, win Rome. However, your rival has the backing of Crassus, the richest man in all of Rome. The Auto Crassus is the one actually calling the shots as the game's AI system. And in fact, Caesar, Pompey, and Crassus were known as the first triumvirate, so you're actually going against your friends here. That's sad. It's like Fox and the Hound all over again. The game is played over a series of rounds, and your goal in Caesar is to place your last control token before Auto Crassus does. And, you know, rule the known world and reshape it in your image, you're just deciding which one of you is going to be the dictator. It's not like there's a good guy here. And that was that guy's real name, Pompey. He went by Pompey the Great. That's a name. I just don't get names like that anymore. Place the game board in the middle of your play area. The board is a map of the late Roman Republic and is made up of provinces. Each province is surrounded by a number of border spaces. Place a Senate province bonus tile on Italia. Then gather the remaining province bonus tiles and shuffle them. Place one at random in each of the remaining empty province spaces, skipping the dotted space in Italia. Choose whether to be boring old Julius Caesar, who they talked about in school, bleh, or a guy that you've probably never heard of who unironically went by Pompey the great, or just decide between red and blue. I like blue. Take your bag and each of your tokens and place your opponents to the side. You have two kinds of tokens. Control tokens, the ones with the very friendly cartoon eagle, which mark your gained provinces and your overall control of Rome. Influence tokens are split in half with two numbers and a symbol. When played, an influence token is placed on a border space with a matching symbol, providing influence to both provinces it touches. This symbol, the laurel, is a wild and can be placed on any border space. The influence tokens go in each bag. The control tokens go here. Draw two influence tokens for yourself and three for Autocrasses, placing his in a line. Gather the command tiles. Set your difficulty by which tiles you include. For an easy game, take all the A tiles and both B tiles. A normal game uses one B and one C, and a hard game uses both Cs, no Bs. Shuffle the stack of six tiles to form the command stack, and you're ready to play and fight against your friends. I got sad again. Each turn plays thusly. Autocrasis takes the first turn, but we're going to look at how your turn works first and then go through how their turn works. Your turn is simple. Place one of your two influence tokens on a border space somewhere on the map. The symbol on the token must match the symbol on the space, or be a laurel, which is wild, and the token must be oriented in such a way so as to assign influence to each province on the border. If this was not the final unoccupied border space of a province, nothing happens. Draw a new influence token and move on. If this was the final unoccupied border space of one or more provinces, the province is now closed. Take the province bonus token token and set it to the side for now. Then add the total value of influence for each color in the closed province. Whomever's is higher wins control of the province. Place one of that color's control markers in the newly emptied province space. Note that if the closed province was Italia, you'll place two control tokens. Then if you control a neighboring province, you'll place another control token on the border space separating them. And if placing this influence token closed two provinces, you'll do these steps with both. Then resolve any bonus tiles you received. A tactics bonus tile allows another turn immediately after this one, skipping autocrasses. Though if you receive two tactics bonuses on the same turn, you'll only take one additional, so try to spread those out because that's a really, really good one to get. A wealth token increases your hand size. Immediately draw a new influence token in addition to the one you'll draw at the end of your turn. The might bonus allows you to flip a control marker on the board face down, preventing it from linking with a neighboring province. And the Senate token is the big one. If, when you took this token, you also took control of the province it was in, you'll place it here with a number of control tokens under it, equal to the number of Senate tokens you have, including this one. So the first one will get you one. But your third Senate bonus in a game will be three control tokens in addition to the one you put on the province. And remember, that's the goal, to run out of control tokens. When you're done resolving your final bonus token, draw a new influence token and move on to 
to Autocrasis' turn. Draw the top command tile and resolve it in order from top to bottom. An A tile, the one you're going to run into the most often, looks like this. This means draw two influence tokens from Autocrasis' bag and add them to the line of his tokens on the right. Then resolve one of the tokens. Then discard the leftmost influence token, placing it back in Autocrasis' draw bag, leaving him with three just as he started. To resolve a token for Autocrasis, you have to follow kind of a flow chart, and it starts out pretty ambiguous, but it's going to get a lot easier to do as you move later into the game. First, Autocrasis will try to win a province. You'll identify any provinces which are one border space away from closing. If any such provinces could be closed and won by any of Autocrasis's available influence tokens, do so, making sure to use the lowest value that will win the province. Place a control token on this space, remembering to place an additional control token on the border between neighboring provinces Autocrasis already controls. If he cannot win a province, Autocrasis will still try to close a province. Place their lowest value qualifying token. When Autocrasis closes a province, place the bonus token in his area. If it's a tactics, wealth, or might token, nothing happens, though for a harder game you could discard one of Autocrasis's control tokens for each bonus token it receives. However, if it's a senate bonus and Autocrasis won that province, Autocrasis places control tokens underneath just as you would. If no provinces can be closed, Autocrasis next finds the province in which he is losing by the most. He'll place his highest value available influence token in this case. If he's not losing anywhere, he'll place his highest available token in the province in which he's closest to winning. If no such provinces exist, he'll place his highest value token in a province adjacent to one he already controls. If they don't control any provinces yet, pick a central province. Sardinia, Sicilia, Italia, Achaia, or Creta. If there's a high here, he'll always pick Italia if able. And if somehow you make it all the way to the bottom of the list, Autocrasis will pick any remaining province where he can put his highest value token. Once more from the top, Autocrasis will try to win a province with his lowest token that will win the province. If he can't, he'll try to close the province with his lowest token. If he can't, he'll try to increase influence where he's losing with his highest value token. If he can't, he'll try to increase influence where he's winning with his highest value token. If he can't, he'll place his highest value token on a province adjacent to one he controls. If he can't, he'll pick a central province. If he can't, he'll pick anywhere he can place his highest value token. Got it? Great. Now we gotta do tiebreakers. If more than one province qualifies for whichever step you make it to, like if he could win more than one province or if he's losing by the same amount in more than one province, there's a whole second flowchart you gotta follow. In this case, he'll try to pick the province that is adjacent to a province that Autocrasis already controls. If neither province is adjacent to a controlled province, or if they all are, pick the province with a Senate bonus tile. Remember, Autocrasis wants those just as much as you do. If it's still a tie, pick one that's a central province. Still a tie, pick the one that adjacent to a central province. If it's still a tie at that point, just choose randomly. Flip a coin, ask Siri, whatever. Once you have identified the province that Autocrasis will choose, you may still face a tie between spaces Autocrasis could place his influence token. Autocrasis will choose the space that also borders a province in which Autocrasis is losing by the most. If still a tie, the border of a central province. Again, if it's still a tie at that point, pick randomly. If multiple tokens fit the criteria, pick the non-wild token first. If still a tie, pick the one whose combined numbers are either the highest or lowest, whichever is applicable to the place if it's still a tie, the leftmost. Which is a lot, I will grant you, though most of these situations, the tiebreakers and stuff, aren't going to come up all that often, and when they do, it's going to usually be early game. So let's just take a look at how the game starts. Autocrasis goes first. Draw a command tile. In this case, draw two new influence tokens, placing them to the right of the line of influence tokens that are already in place, then resolve one of them. So we could start at the top of all of those questions here, but the first five assume that there's already influence tokens in play. There aren't yet, so we can skip those. So he'll pick a central province to place his highest value token. Remember, these are Sardinia, Sicilia, Achaia, Italia, and Creta. It is still a tie because they're all open, so he's going to pick Italia first. There's two of each symbol surrounding Italia, so that's a tie too. But one of each symbol also shares a border with another central province, and those spaces win out. Now pick the highest value non-wild token available and place it in the matching space with the higher value half of the token toward Italia. So just remember, Remember, the very first thing that happens is Autocrasis will place the highest value token in whichever of these three spaces matches the symbol on the token. That's easy.
You don't need a flowchart for that. Then discard the leftmost token back to his bag. Then it's your turn. Place one of your two tokens on the map, then draw a new one. Now it's back to Autocrasis. Draw two tokens and put them to the right of the line. He can't close a province, so skip those options, but he is losing in a province because we now have influence in Dalmatia. So he'll pick his highest value token that can go in one of the unoccupied spaces bordering Dalmatia. And back to you, and on and on. Play continues in this way, alternating between you and Autocrasis. When you need to draw a new command tile, and none remain, shuffle them and refresh the stack. If at any time you place your final control token on the board or under a senate token, you win. And if you're Caesar, all of your friends and all of your enemies are going to conspire to kill you in like four more years. Sorry about that, but at least you get a pretty good play out of it. However, you lose if at any time you must place a token on the board and you have none remaining, or if Autocrasis places the last of his control tokens on the board or under a senate token. And that's how to play the base game of Caesar. Seize Rome in 20 minutes. That's part of the title, you gotta say the whole thing each time? All right. But when you're ready to add a little bit more depth, you can introduce poison. Mix the three poison tokens together with the province bonus tokens, then remove three at random before setting up the board. When using poison, begin the game with three influence tokens in your hand rather than two. When you resolve a poison bonus token, Autocrasis discards a token at random back to his bag. He's now playing with one fewer option. But not so fast, because he's going to get to do the same thing to you if he gets a poison bonus token. And if either you or Autocrasis ever start your turn with no influence tokens in play, that player loses. And it's the same setup when using Centurions. Mix the three Centurion tokens together with the province bonus tokens, then remove three at random before setting up the board. You'll also need the six Centurion influence tokens, three in each color, and make a few changes to the setup of the command stack. For an easy game, use four A's, one B, and one D. For a normal game, use two A, two B, one C, and one D. And for a hard game, use four A, one C, and 1 E. When you resolve a Centurion bonus token, take one of your set-aside Centurion influence tokens and add it to your hand. This replaces the one you would normally draw at the end of this turn. It does not increase your hand size. However, Autocrasis is going to do things a little bit differently. When he closes a region with a Centurion bonus token, he'll just discard it. But when he runs into this symbol on a command tile, you'll pick one of his set-aside Centurion influence tokens at random and place it to the right of their face-up tokens. Remember when Autocrasis Autocrasis discards a token at the end of his turn, he always pulls from the left side of the line. When playing with both modules, mix all six tokens together with the rest of the bonus tokens, then discard six before continuing with the setup. Or set those six aside to play using the border control module, which requires both poison and centurion tokens. All else plays as normal, but you may choose to place one of your tokens face down in one of these three spaces to immediately draw and resolve one of the set aside bonus tokens. Face down tokens do not exert any influence though, and Autocrasis will never take that option even if he places a token in one of those three spaces. And that's how to use the modules for Caesar. Seize Rome in 20 minutes. Now get out of my decadent empire! The Grouchy Nerd by the way, that 20 minutes is not taking into account any hyperfixation you may experience making sure that all of the eagles are facing the right way or all the lines on the influence tokens exactly line up with the borderline. Just as a warning for those with OCD or ADD or ADHD or if you're just, you know, a little high. <laughs>